Hello and welcome to the Mandalorian Review Show on the Merkwood the Movie Blog podcast feed. Every week we review each episode of Disney Plus' The Mandalorian. I am one of your hosts, Sean, and as always, I am joined by Jay Wade. How's it going, Wade? Boba Fett kicking ass for Chapter 4 again, baby. Okay. Like, uh, <laughs> when are we going to get over the Boba Fett thing? Um... Like, okay, when we talk seriously about The Mandalorian, that's when when <laughs> I switch gears. But as far as getting over it in a, in a joking way, I will never get over it. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> uh, today we are covering The Mandalorian Chapter 4 Sanctuary, directed by Bryce Dallas Howard and written yeah. by Jon Favreau. Um, right away, Wade, first thoughts on the episode. Uh, initial thoughts, it was definitely a filler. I'm not complaining. Like I said, I felt episode two was a bit of a filler, Mm -hmm. but I never, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, so far, this is my least favorite episode. Um, doesn't mean I didn't like it or it was bad. It's just, you know, of the four, it's my least favorite. You're going to have that. Um, it, it was, it was okay. It was okay. There were, there was, uh, there was one thing that rubbed me raw at the beginning. There was... Something that made me turn my head, tilt my head to the side like a dog. Um, <laughs> and, then, and then there was something else that just kind of didn't make sense and I'm still confused about. But other than that, I enjoyed it, man. I've watched it three times so far. So, Okay, okay. Uh, I loved it. It was definitely filler. It is my favorite of the episodes so far. Ooh. Yeah. Um, I thought that this gave – especially – the scene that I picked out to talk about gave uh, Pedro Pascal did the most acting without showing his face so far yeah. in this episode. Yeah. And I think that while it didn't really tell us anything new, we really got to see the Mando be a little more emotionally vulnerable in this episode than we have in the past. I really enjoyed. And I really enjoyed that this was, it did not feel like it didn't really feel like star Wars almost. Oh, it didn't. It, and I, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that it felt different. Uh, that's like something that I think that I think you can do in the TV shows. Yeah. You know? And so, like every episode so far, there were a couple things in this that were just that just screamed Western. A hundred percent. The entire the entire plot of this episode was it, Western and whipped, yeah. whipped almost straight from um uh, um, there's there's an episode of the Clone Wars that is almost exactly this episode. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. It, so, and I know exactly what episode you're talking yeah. about. And I admit that I have that is one of the episodes that I only watched about five minutes of before I realized it wasn't going to be one I was interested in, and I skipped it. But I do, I fair. am very aware of the episode that you're talking about. <laughs> that's so. completely fair. Um. Episode length, I really want to touch on real quick. Uh, yeah, man. Oh, I thought I thought it was good. It was. It's it just too short uh, or too long. No, it it was good. It was just um. It, and again, like I said last week, I'm not like like what they've given me so far. I love it. It's just that fan in me just wants more content, you know? Uh-huh. And I don't feel like they skimped on the content at all in any of these episodes. It's just, I want more, 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 you know? So that's why, you know, I'm, that's where I'm coming from. But I mean, I'm not, I'm not really upset. At first I thought I was going to end up being upset when, when the first two episodes dropped and we saw the, the run times, I thought, man, this, this is going to irritate me really bad. But it's not irritating me because, well, not as bad. I mean, it's not irritating that I want it longer, but it's not irritating me because it's it's all solid content, dude. It's it's just it's all solid content, and I can't complain. Other than them making me fall in love with Baby Yoda, <laughs> that I will complain about all the time. Uh, you have an update on that for this episode? I still want one to snuggle with for Christmas. <laughs> Okay, you're not getting one apparently. Uh, what? Yeah, the no merch, no merch in time for Christmas. That's BS. How could they not have foreseen that, dude? You I have know what no I mean? idea. I have no idea. Wow. I have no idea. It's insane. It's insane. Uh, my hope is next season 
they'll do six hour long episodes instead of eight, whatever we've got so far. I'm a little worried about the Marvel shows at this point because what they say every time they talk about those shows are it's going to be a six part series hour long each. And I'm not sure if that's what they said about the Mandalorian before it came out, but that is most definitely not what we're getting. Yeah, they, they did not say that. They they never said okay. anything about runtime. All they okay. ever said about Mandalorian was that it was a limited series, and okay. no one really knew exactly what that meant. Then that makes me feel a little bit better, because I swear I keep hearing about the Marvel shows that they're six-episode limited, like six-hour-long six, epi- six hour long episodes. With uh, that, I feel like that's what I keep hearing about it, so... Dude, six hours is a long time for you know a fucking what I mean. episode. You know, you know what I mean. Six episodes an hour long each. Uh... <laughs> Bryce Dallas Howard directed this episode. I really, I really thought she did a good job considering uh, I've never seen her direct anything. It didn't really have a whole lot of style to it. Although the opening scene I really liked. Although you might have said you had a different take on that. So, you know, what? at this point, we're going to not go in depth, but we are going to get a little spoilery because I want to hear about the stuff that Wade didn't love before we go into the in-depth discussion. So, Wade, you said you had an issue with that opening scene? Yeah, and, and well, it's not really an issue. Again, again, I just don't want people to think like when I say issue or like I didn't like something that like uh-huh. I have some huge outrage or I'm pissed or something like that. It's nothing like that. It's just something that just annoyed me was, uh, and I'm sure I'm not the only person who thought of this. Um, Thanksgiving was Thursday. Yes. And this episode drops Friday, the day after Thanksgiving. Yes. And the intro to me, to me, just screamed like, like, I don't know. It just kind of came off to me like they were, there was maybe even the slightest bit of an agenda with this specific episode falling when it did. Um, Because I got the feeling, it had that feeling of like, these people were Native Americans, by comparison of the Star Wars universe to us, that they were Native Americans, and the people coming in and raided them were the evil white devil settlers. That's how I took it, and maybe that was just because of the timing of when it dropped, but that when when I saw that opening, I was like, of course, here we go, Thanksgiving, here we go. But, I mean, and I don't care all that much. Like it, I like I said, I've watched the damn episode three yeah. times, and I'll watch it more. I'm just saying that is a thought that I had. I was like, really, dude? Come on. Huh. I never I never got that reading, but when you say it, I understand what you're talking about. Um, I think that's probably just coincidence. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I'm sure. Because when they released this, I, I do not think at all that Favreau or uh, uh, Filoni were sitting around last year (laughs) going, hey, man, uh, we're writing this. Um, Man, if we drop it on this specific date, then we can make it line up with the the last Skywalker, Rise of Skywalker, or whatever the fuck. Now I'm confused (laughs) on that. But you get what I'm saying. He's like, we could line it up so that the series ends right after that, that, uh, premiere of the movie, and then, but if we work these around, we can do this specific episode right after Thanksgiving, man, like the day after it, next year. Like, there's no way in hell they did that. It was a coincidence, I'm sure. Well, I yeah. don't want to say I'm sure, but I'm willing to bet it was. <laughs> but either way, it was just, that's how it opened, and I was like, oh, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> that's the next deep fake that Collider needs to do. Is Favreau uh, and yeah, Filoni. that yeah. would be great. <laughs> um, yeah, I really enjoyed the opening. I didn't think too much about it. I I liked the shot of the fishes at the beginning. Yeah, that was the pretty. At the beginning, that was pretty. Uh, that was the only stylized shot in. The, oh, there was another. The 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 ATST coming out of the forest was also kind of stylized, but there wasn't a whole lot of style to Bryce Dallas Howard's directing in this episode. But it was still, it was good. It was, for having never seen her direct anything, it wasn't bad. Yeah, I can agree with that. I mean, yeah, like, you know, nothing spectacular jumped out, but, yeah. I mean, I have seen a lot worse directing. Yeah. Like Brown Bunny, terrible movie. I don't care how, ma- how much people try that. to push that shit as an art film. It is terrible. Brown Bunny. 
Uh, 46% on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, fuck off. Terrible All right, movie. Uh, let's see. Anyone who knows <laughs> Chloe Savaney know that movie. <laughs> anyway, moving on. You have anything else uh, you want to talk about generally in the episode? Um, Generally, no. No? You no. have anything else you didn't like that you want to touch on before? Because uh, well, as we know, no, you're calling for a boycott of the series. Uh, <laughs> you're trying to raise money to remake the Mandalorian. So, what do you? Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, <laughs> no, uh, there there was just one thing that confused me. I, it's not that I didn't like it or anything. It just confused me was um, when he when he met the girl. I can't. I'm not good with names, dude. When he neither met the was girl, I. Um, yeah, when he met the 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 former rebel drop oh, the drop oh. rebel girl Cara Dune. Yes, her. When he met her. And then uh, they were having that fight outside of the cantina. If you noticed, okay, she was hitting his helmet, and then it, it sounded like she had something metal on her knuckles, right? Yeah, I think she had, like, a glove on, right? Like a metal Yeah, yeah, glove. yeah. Okay, so she hit him in the hel- helmet several times with no issues. But if you watched it the first time, okay, she hit him in the helmet, no issue. Then she swings at him, he moves, and, and her hand hits the wood framing of the cantina, and she gives this reaction as if it hurt her hand. Oh, yeah. And then she goes back and starts hitting the Mandalorian in the helmet several more times with no issues. And I'm like, okay, so wood obviously is much stronger than steel, <laughs> evidently, in this world. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't... Uh... I thought that whole entire first fight scene was a little oddly choreographed. Yeah. I thought it was I thought it was good. I liked the ending of that fight scene. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But, that was uh, sweet. But I thought that the actual fight itself was choreographed a little weird. It, it looked a little uh, it just looked a little weird, but yeah, I I see what you're saying about the I didn't notice that specifically, but I believe it because the rest of the fight scene looked weird to me. Yeah, it was really odd cuz I'm like, wait a minute. Because as soon as she looks like she hurt her hand, I go, as soon as she did it, I go, wait, she just hit him in the helmet, though. Yeah. I'm like, what What the hell's going on here? <laughs> yes. Do uh, you have anything else besides that? Uh, no, other than that, uh, the only other thing I'll say is since we're on this scene, them stopping the fight because they hear Baby Yoda <laughs> slurping down the, the, the soup and him just standing there looking at them was awesome. I, I loved, loved that. that. Every yeah. I loved everything in this episode. How people keep telling it, Baby Yoda, what to do, and he just doesn't listen. Yeah, well, <laughs> that was another care. thing at the very beginning. He's talking to Baby yeah. Yoda as if he can understand him, and it reminds me of how I talk to my my cats, and I used <laughs> to talk to my dog. You know, like they're yeah. like, "Hey, dude, you you can't do that. You can't <laughs> play with that in here. Yeah. That's my shoe." I'm, I've told you several times, dude. Go put it back. No. Dude, get out of here. You can't do that. And it, I don't know. What's funny is if you if you really get into it, you can convince yourself that they understand you. And I think that's yeah. what happened with the Mandalorian. I think he's convinced himself Baby Yoda knows what he's saying. Do, do you think Baby Yoda doesn't know what he's saying? No, not at all. Baby yeah. Yoda is still <laughs> a baby. He's 50 years old, but he's still a baby. Yeah. That's how I'm looking at it. I don't know. I... I'm not sure if they're going to do a twist later where like they're going to be in trouble and all of a sudden he's going to be like, oh, yes, I know what you're talking about. He's going to be, no. like, he's oh going to be Sean God. Connery. He's going to be like, hmm, I'm Sean Connery. <laughs> wow, that would be amazing. The Empire. Now, here's my question, though. Now, if this baby Yoda, if he is not raised at all around any other of his own species, is he still going to speak like Yoda? Oh my God. Is he? Or will he talk normal? All right, I'm adding like, that to our notes. Is that a trait amongst gonna... their species, or is it something they that they learn by growing up and learning how to speak from their own species? Uh, we're going to keep an eye on that. Yep. And that's gonna. Dude, I think. Gonna... Dude, I'm gonna tweet out Dave Filoni after this and ask him. Yeah. Um. I mean, that's a also, legit question, dude. Uh, yeah. Did Yaddle speak like that, or was that just Yoda? I don't think we ever saw Yaddle actually speak. Did Yoda have a stroke at one point and is now just <laughs> speaks like that? I don't. Maybe that's where the cane comes from. Maybe because he was pretty spry in uh, Attack of the Clones, dude. Yeah, but he's also talking like that in Attack of the Clones, so. 
true, but he had, had but he had the Canaan attack of of the clothes oh, too. Oh, that's true. That's true. Hmm. Who knows? Who Are we going to take a break? Yeah, I'm going to tweet out at Filoni and ask him about that. I want to know. That's do. a legit question. That is a legitimate question from us over here at the Merc with a Movie Blog family. Also here with the Merc at the Movie Blog feed and family. Uh, we're going to take a break and we're going to hear about some other shows on the feed. So we'll be back in a second. Hello, everybody. Jay Wade and Kaylin here to tell you about SEN Afterlife. It's an after show podcast where we expand on the week of craziness on SEN Live as well as have guests on to join in the fun. Yep, and we get personal too. We do movie reviews and at times we go way off the rails, which I guarantee is always Kaylin's fault. Hey, how rude and not true. So come join us on the Mark with the Movie Blog feed and remember to rate, share, and subscribe. And as always, enjoy. Hi everyone, this is Sarah, host of Go Get That Rose podcast, a podcast that is dedicated to talking about all things Bachelor Nation. Join Jay Wade, a man in his 40s who is recently new to all things Bachelor Nation, and myself, someone who has been watching passionately for the past three years, as we review, share our thoughts on each episode of whatever show is currently on TV, whether that is Bachelor, Bachelorette, or Bachelor in Paradise. We might not even know everyone's name, but we have fun nonetheless. You can find us on Merkwood and Movie Blog Feed wherever you listen to podcasts. Hey there, Schmodown fans, this is Josh the Merc Rainer, and I am here to tell you about my show, Talkin' Schmodown. Whether it's Andrew Guy getting hit with a chair, John Roca screaming, Outlaw! Or the emotional retirement of the Shire Wolf, I talk about it all. So you can catch me right here on Anchor and all the other major podcasting platforms. So, as I ask every episode, are you ready to talk Schmodown? I am. Hey, it's Sarah, and I'd like to tell you about Afterlife. It's a weekly Collider Live after show podcast where Mike, Sean, and I give our takes on Roxy and Dorena's annex, on Yodi's producing skills, and whatever Cody and Alex are up to in that booth. In addition to having guests, we expand on the crew's discussions and add our own craziness to the mix. You can find the show on Merkwin and Movie Blog Feed on all the podcasting platforms. See you soon! All right, check out all those shows. They're excellent. Uh, Afterlife is going well. And SEN Afterlife, Wade, you are killing it. I've been listening to your episodes. Uh, not a whole lot of... More than me, I think. Not a whole lot of SEN talk, but entertaining nonetheless. Well, the, this, the last two weeks, we had quite a bit of SEN talk. To be fair, I, I don't really talk about Afterlife on... <laughs> or, or, well, I don't talk right. about Collider Live on Afterlife either. That's all right. Um, and we shifted gears this last week. Um, we got Kaylin to stop talking about dirty stuff, so that helped out oh, wow. a lot. What a, <laughs> what a relief. I don't know how you possibly was able to do that. Uh, all right, we're going to do some in-depth discussion based on chronological order. So we're going to hit that final battle scene first, which, Wade, you wanted to talk about. Wade, tell me about that final battle scene. Well, really, there's only – really, there's one main thing I want to touch on on this battle scene. I mean, as far as battle scenes go – cool it was a battle scene i don't have any real major issues with it other than when the the atst starts shining its light and the girls like get down and the two yeah. idiots stand up <laughs> right where they were and don't move you know it's like you moron she just said get what? down yeah um they're obviously the two clowns of the of the community but um then they killed the leader yeah <laughs> I don't know how that works. Um, <laughs> yeah. But no, my my biggest thing that I wanted to bring up is, okay, the ATST walks up to the water, okay? First of all, it has red eyes. Now, I know that it doesn't really have eyes, that those the hatches were open and they probably put some red light in there to glow yeah. and look scary, okay? But just follow me here, okay? Yeah. The ATST had red eyes. It, it, it. It had the ability to think because it stopped and somehow knew that they did something to that water as a trap. I There's mean, no way in hell people. that it would have known that 
there and are then, people inside of the. Well, they wouldn't. They wouldn't have known that though. I think. I think I will counter that because when he goes, when it goes to step into it, the head kind of tilts down and looks down at the ground, and I think they saw the water there. I no, I that agree. Water has always been there though. Yeah, so I think they kind of knew. They were like, "All right, watch our step because the water's here." Oh, there's the water. Don't step there. Like the See, head I was facing as, down. I took it as is it stopped because they knew they did something to it because they they always knew that water was there and they were just walking full on toward it like as if it didn't matter and that they knew that they could walk through it but then he stops looks down like oh they must have done magically i can see that they've dug this pit deeper i can see through the water that you can't see through to see that they've dug it deeper and then it starts making noises, like growling noises, and I'm like, dude, what the hell is going on? I do think that I was able – I was okay with it, although I did think that it was a very – it was weird because they were trying very hard to make it Jurassic Park. Right, right. And Dallas Bryce Howard. Yeah, yeah. Or is it Bryce Dallas Howard? Bryce Dallas Howard. Whatever. Um, Sorry, Bryce. Yeah. I, I really do. I do like. I, I do here. like some of your work. It's pretty yeah. good stuff. But... I, I like the Jurassic World movies. I don't eh, yeah, we're, they're not uh, awful. Star Anyways, Wars. Uh, <laughs> Star Wars. Star Wars Jurassic Park is what we just watched. Um, yes. I I agree with what you're saying, but it didn't really bother me that much. I kind of explained away the whole. They went to take a step. The head was tilted down so they could see out the window, and they were like, "That's there's something fucky about that." So I'm gonna I'm gonna not step there. Now, it making noises? I got nothing there. Yeah. I got no explanation for that. Uh, but yeah, I really liked that battle scene. I loved the shot of Cara Dune in the water. Mm, mm-hmm. Just wading around in the water, like, try, like right up against the embankment or whatever. Like, yeah, yeah. trying not to get shot. <laughs> uh, that was probably my favorite. That was probably my favorite shot in any of the action scenes so far. Just yeah, that was in terms good. of like composition. Um I, I every time the Mando pulls out that that pulse rifle or whatever, mm-hmm. I love it. <laughs> Anytime yeah, he yeah. starts disintegrating dudes, I love that. <laughs> I I I thought it was silly that the two class clowns are able to take out the leader of these guys. I thought that was a little mm-hmm. I thought that the was a little goofy. Dog. Yeah, the Whoa. dog thing. Well I, I got um orcs from Lord of the Rings vibes from them. Oh, I got I got a bulldog. It looked like a bulldog or something to me. I, I do, like, yeah. I, I I see that rough, rough. But like <laughs> I, I expected one of them to go meat's back on the menu, boys. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, that would have been great. And pikes behind or whatever. Uh, <laughs> you you know, real good. quick though, something uh, about that ATST. Mm-hmm. Um, they asked the question, which was a valid question, where did they get an Imperial Walker? And they never answered question. it or never even touched on that again. You think there's any chance we'll find out? Because we still got the Empire to deal with, with Giancarlo right. Esposito's it, it, I, character. I don't think we'll find out, but I think yeah. that that is a very legit question that they asked, and I'm disappointed that they just let it go. And, and it sucks because there is a very simple answer to that. You literally just say... This, there was a battle here during the Galactic Civil War. Left, they left behind an ATST. Right. Like, that, that makes sense. That, that would track, and that's all you'd have to say. Which I guess my head fills in that as a gap. I just like assume that's what it is, but it, it sucks that. Well, yeah, but have when you have the dialogue. lead characters asking the question, yeah, yeah, then it because I like when I view things, I like to put myself as if I'm in yeah. in the the situation yeah. with them. So if you're looking at it from that point of view, it's like, well, yeah, we can figure it out. But the lead characters, it's their story. And if they don't know and they're not even trying to answer this question, then why even bring it up? Yeah, then like they shouldn't have even asked. It would have made it. It would have been better. We could have just assumed like you said. So, but anyway, that was that was the only other thing that kind of I was like, what? Uh, Yeah, no, I I understand that. I agree. It was a little weird. I I really liked the battle scene. I think it's probably my favorite. It's probably my second favorite battle scene so far behind the uh the showdown when the Mando showed up last episode. 
when uh, he's like pinned down trying to get to his ship and all the Mandalorians show up. That's my favorite so far. So, but this is this is the second favorite. I really enjoyed it. I liked uh, I liked (laughs) I liked the lead up to it. When can anybody shoot? And Amara's the only one that raises her hand, and everybody else is like trying to hit the yeah. uh, Thing. And she's just, do, 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 do. and we never got an explanation as to how she knows how to shoot either. That's also true. I just, I, I didn't really care. I, I liked, I liked it because I think it worked with establishing kind of why the Mandalorian would want to stay instead right, of right. instead of like it kind of sucks that they didn't flesh her out more as a character and that she was literally pretty much used as a vehicle to a vehicle to express the Mandalorians want to settle down. Right. Right. But, uh, I, I did like that scene where she's learning how to shoot. Cause you can see he doesn't have his face off or his face off. He doesn't have his helmet off, but you can see just by the way he's looking at her through the helmet. He's like, yeah. And right. he gives her that nod. He gives her the look, you know, the helmeted yep. look. You yeah. ever give you ever give a girl the helmeted look, Wade? Um, not with the head which with I'm speaking. No. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know where that came. I apologize, everybody. <laughs> I don't know where it's early. Okay, it's Saturday morning. I don't know where that came from. My apologies. Let's move on. Let's talk about man the Mandalorian talking to Amara at the end. I <laughs> love that scene. I thought that was the most emotion we've gotten out of the Mandalorian so far. Yeah. And I loved seeing, I loved seeing the side of the Mandalorian where he could settle down, but he just his values keep him from doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and I I do want to say real quick, just real quick, him, yes. them. Okay, the scene where he took his helmet off yeah. to eat. Make now I understand he took it off to eat, so there was a reason why he took it off in that moment. Yeah. Um, it, it all felt extremely forced and out of place to me. What felt forced to me was that he did it in front of the window. Because mm. I, everybody can look up and see him. Well, oh, yeah, that's, that's one issue. <laughs> that's one issue. To me, it felt forced because it happened right after the discussion about his helmet. I think that... I, you know, like if they would have waited till next episode and ha- and shown him with a plate of food and he's by himself, like on his ship, and he's and he's by himself and he takes his helmet off and sets it to the side and you see the plate of food, that yeah. I I would believe flowed a, would flow a little bit better. It just seemed a little forced to me. No, I I don't disagree with what you're saying. I think that's just the nature of writing a TV show. Yeah. Like you yeah. want those things to ha- in real life. You know, if it was spread out more, it probably would have not had the same impact on most of the audience that it did than having the conversation then immediately doing it. Well, it does feel forced. I think that's just the nature of TV and movie is, you know, when you talk about something, you have the payoff pretty soon after. Uh, my big issue with that scene is that everybody could see him. <laughs> everybody. Yeah, that's true. He was not hiding from anybody no. in that window. Um <laughs> But, but I like but, that yeah, but, at, but that converse or that bit was had a lot to do with that conversation that they had on that yes. front porch. And I liked she goes to take the helmet off and he pushes it back down. Yeah. I like that. I love because then that's and the great part about that is that he's making his choice before he's forced to make a choice. Where right. because as we all know, eventually there's an assassination attempt on Baby Yoda. That's when he doesn't have a choice anymore. He has to leave and he has to take Baby Yoda with him. Mm-hmm. But he already refuses. He already makes a choice when he has one. You know, it's not, yeah. he's not getting forced into it when he puts the helmet back on or when he keeps, yeah. keeps it from taking it off. The only also, thing he was forced into was taking Baby Yoda with him. Yes, which he did not want to. And I was almost crying when he was going to leave Baby Yoda behind. I thought for a split second, they really were going to kill Baby Yoda. Like, for a uh, split ooh. second, I was like, dude, are they really? I, I thought... I was like, yes, do it. I didn't think they were going to kill Baby Yoda. I thought they were going to kill Omera's daughter. That mm. she was going to get, like, in between the blast. Cause I, oh, I, man. Because I didn't think that there was any way that Baby Yoda died. But I I thought that would be a, an equally impacted. But I, you know, he drops Cara Dunes behind him. I thought that was cool. I kind of yeah. wish they had the guts to kill Amara's daughter instead. I think that would have been interesting. But um, yeah, would have. 
But yes, I liked that scene. I liked the talk earlier in the episode. I'm just going to talk about the Mando in general this episode. <laughs> I like the talk earlier where he says, or, or no, maybe it was at the end actually, when Cara Dune asks him, what happens if you take the helmet off? Do they come after you? Oh yeah, that was down? that was like when they were sitting on the porch. Yeah, and she's like, "Do they hunt you down?" And he goes, "No, you just can't put it back on." And I love that. Yeah. I love that it's just that simple. Yeah, it is, and, and I love the 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 honor and the trust in honor yes. and honesty that the culture has of Mandalorian yes. culture because you know he's on this planet. He could take his helmet off and no one would, no one would know. know. No one would but know. He would know. And he yes. would be honest if anyone if any other Mandalorian were to ask him, he would tell them the truth. Yes. I love that. I will um hmm, okay, let me see. I, I want to touch on one thing. Uh he mentions the Mandalorian saving him. Um mm-hmm. find it interesting they didn't show it. I still think there's more to that scene than just the Mandalorian saving him, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Uh but We'll have to wait and see. Because I feel like if he's just going to come out and say, yeah, the Mandalorians took me, or they took me in. Like, if he's just going to say that, why not show it? Because later on, when they do show the rest of that scene, we're going to be like, yeah, he already told us. You know? Yeah. So yeah. I feel like, what? maybe it's not Obi-Wan, but I feel like something is going to happen in that scene that's going to be more than what we've been told. Uh, whether it's the dark saber ripping through that thing's chest or a lightsaber ripping through that chest. I'm not sure, but I, I feel like, I feel like there's still more to that than they've shown. What do you think about that? Yeah. I'm with you, dude. I I do think Obi-Wan is going to be the savior of, of, of him specifically. Um, and, and come to the rescue in the flashbacks. It, It just would make so much sense. Yeah. I mean, it makes so much sense that it would kind of be shocking if it didn't happen. I want to look real quick. So this was episode four. When Dude, does Deborah don't Chow look at come me. back? Turn off those cameras, buddy. I'm in my boxers. Deborah Chow comes back for episode seven. So in three episodes, uh, she's back, and she her yeah. episode airs the day before the Rise of Skywalker. What yep. if Ooh. episode seven? December 18th, the day before the Rise of Skywalker, Obi-Wan Kenobi shows up on this show. That would be effing amazing, dude. I wow. honestly, that would actually, it's, it's late enough in the series that they probably would have had time to film with him. Yeah, and I really yeah. think it'll be five seconds if he shows up. It, like, literally, he'll be in there. We'll see him. He probably won't even have any lines of dialogue. But like, maybe even just at a distance. Yeah. yeah. Like, say someone else personally say say someone else personally saves the mandalorian himself okay yeah and then as they're carrying him away he's looking over the shoulder in the background you just see uh you and mcgregor's obi-wan with his lightsaber yeah just just go into town yeah anything i i think it's gonna happen i'm saying it here i'm saying it for the record, I think it's going to happen, and I think it's going to happen in Episode 7, the day before the Rise of Skywalker. And then I think Obi-Wan's in the Rise of Skywalker. Um, not as a Force ghost or anything, but just as a voiceover. A voiceover, I could see that. If if he is there visually, like as a Force ghost, I think they would have to go with uh, with uh, McGinnis. McGinnis? Yes. Do you mean Alec Guinness? Or yeah, Alec Guinness. <laughs> hold on, hold on. If they if they go with a force a force ghost or a visual something other than a voiceover, they would have to go with Alec Guinness in, in Rise of Skywalker. Of course, it just of course. it wouldn't make any sense to to have uh, Ewan being visually seen in that movie. Yeah, no, I think they're just gonna but I, a voiceover. I think yeah, I think he's gonna be a voiceover in that movie. I think we're gonna hear a bunch of voiceovers in that movie. I don't think we're gonna see anybody. But I think we're gonna hear him, Hayden. We'll hear um, maybe, gone, maybe? Line, maybe Liam Neeson, maybe Samuel L. Jackson. We'll hear Yoda. I don't think we're gonna see Yoda again, but we'll hear him. Um, my hope is maybe we hear some people from the animated shows like Ahsoka and Ezra, but I, I think that's less likely than yeah. Then, but I think like the main Jedi, uh, at least we're, we'll hear Anakin, Obi Wan, and Yoda maybe mace windu that would be cool but i'm not sure if it's mace windu it's just pre-recorded lines like it's not anything new but um, right, right. And, and it's him telling ray that she's a bad mother effer right? yeah 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 <laughs> that's exactly what it is actually 
But that's all I have for this episode. You are a bad mother effing Jedi! (laughs) He gives her his lightsaber. That's what happens. Oh, wow. Dude, talk about some freaking bling, dude. Yeah, and and there's a scene where they can't show it all in the movie because then it would be rated R. But he's like, look at what's right here. And he points at the handle of the or the the hilt of the lightsaber. He's like, that that engraved right there, that's what you are. (laughs) They can't show what's engraved in the in the thing because then it's rated R. But, you know, (laughs) that's great. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, You have anything else for this episode, Wade? Oh man, uh, no, it it was pretty good. I enjoyed it. Um, like I said, it was my least favorite. Um, doesn't mean I didn't like it, but just means it was my least favorite so far. Mm-hmm. But uh, no, I enjoyed it thoroughly, man. And like I said, I'm 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 gonna watch it again today. So, and you heard it here, folks. First, folks, Wade is calling for a remake of Star Wars: The Mandalorian. Uh, Wade, where can Boba people find Fett? you online? <laughs> Star Wars: The Mandalorian: The Boba Fett Chronicle. Uh, wait. Oh, wait, wait, hold on real quick. In the last episode, when he was down in the forgery, yes. um, there was a Mandalorian behind him that had almost the same color scheme and armor as Boba Fett. There were like, so, so first of all, there were a lot of people that looked a lot like Boba Fett down there. Yeah. Also, Boba Fett was not a Mandalorian. So I was neither is this guy. This guy's a Mandalorian. No, he's not. Yeah, he is. No, it's been proven. He's not actual. He wasn't ban- born on Mandalore. No, but he's he's still part of the group. Uh, oh, but I mean, Boba Jango. Never... Boba, Boba was a clone never... of Jango, and Jango was taken in and raised by the Mandalorians. He wasn't I, Mandalorian either. I don't think so. I'm pretty sure. I don't sure, think Jango Fett changed, was anymore. Yeah. I, I think now in canon, they've made a point to say that he's not that he was not a Mandalorian. So he, um, so he just stole the armor and stuff. He wasn't actually taken in by them like originally. Uh, let me said. Go to, I'm going to canon to see. Da, 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 I mean, da, if that's da, the case, that's going to really upset me because that was always like the cool yes. thing that like so, Jango was Mandalorian and. Although Fett wore Mandalorian armor, the government of Mandalore saw him as nothing more than a common mercenary with no actual ties to the Mandalorian. Man, that sucks, dude. That kind of makes the clone troopers less cool. It makes Boba less cool. It certainly makes Jango less cool. Yeah, that's why I've never really cared about those characters. Jeez, dude. I love Jango Fett. I I like Jango more than Boba, but this kind of spoils it a little bit. Well, I'm sorry to do that to you, Wade. Where can people find you online to comfort you? Y'all can find me and comfort me on the Twitter at jwade1134. That is the letter J W A D E one one three four. And I'm also since we're I just remembered for the first time we do shameless plugs here too. Mm-hmm. Um, also on this same feed, uh, this this podcast feed, Merk with a Movie Blog, or if YouTube is your jam on the YouTube channel, Merk with a Movie Blog. I'm also uh, a host on SEN Afterlife which is an after show for SEN Live. Um, and I am co-host of Go Get That Rose, a Bachelor Nation podcast. And we will be kicking that into full gear here come January when Sweet Puppy Dog Pete's season of Bachelor starts. One day I'm going to watch an episode of The Bachelor so I can come on that show. I don't You are more know. than welcome, dude. It is a fun time. We I don't in know no way take happen. it seriously. Like, we're not people who are sitting there like, oh, I love this. I love this competition. I love these people. They're so amazing. No, dude, we're sitting there like making fun of them and <laughs> and talking about the complete insanity and stupidity that occurs. It's great. All right, all right. We'll see. We'll see. Uh you guys can find me on Twitter at Sean underscore AFK. On this feed, I also am a co-host on Afterlife, the unofficial collection a live after show where we talk about all things movies and the stuff i guess but um see and Dorina. uh yeah we talk about roxy and Dorina. we talk about the stuff they talk about on the show i yell a lot i rant a lot it happens <laughs> um also i do a show with my afterlife co-host mike mixtape called uh into the grid you can follow us on twitter at go into the grid it is a Power Rangers recap show. We watch and review every episode of Power Rangers Dino Thunder, and I'm about ready to jump out a window at this point. Um, <laughs> it's going great. Uh, you can find this show and others on the Merc with the Movie blog feed, which can be located on Anchor, Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, Radio Public, Breaker, and Overcast. Wade, are we on YouTube? 
Yes, yes, we are on YouTube as well. We've okay. got all, all of the Merck shows are up there now. We, we're doing the Talking Schmodown with Josh, who is the founder of Merck and our producer for uh, most of these shows here. Um, uh, yeah, go get that. Rose, After Live, SEN After Live, this show, all on YouTube now. So, you know, if that's your jam, do it to it. Because I know me personally, sometimes I prefer YouTube over, over podcasting platforms. Mm-hmm. But in the end, I'll get it any way I can take it. Of course. You can also follow Merc with the Movie Blog on Twitter at Movie Blog Merc. So uh, thank you guys for listening. This is the way. <laughs>